Biden simply because, and uh, that is that is outstanding. <laughs> um, I don't know who the hell's playing in this game here tonight, guys, because it ain't Kawhi Leonard here, the Clippers. Taking on Phoenix, this thing has gone from, uh, listen, I saw threes this morning. Uh, Phoenix laying three on the road. Uh, now it is seven on the news, of course, that Kawhi is Charmin soft and not playing in this game here tonight. So uh, four points is what we're getting. Now, one can make the argument here, Ralph, uh, that we have made a lot of money this year off of this exact thing happening, right? Star player gets announced late, market goes bonkers, line get, and Vino knows this. It was, it was a topic of conversation every show we had. Uh, and all of a sudden, the market overreacts, and uh, you go against it, and you cash a ticket. Plus seven now for the Clippers without Kawhi at home. Is there any value here, Rob Vino, uh, of cashing another ticket in this spot like we did all season long? Well, <clears throat> we don't have to look very far, Joe, because last night, no Ja Morant, Memphis covers. No Giannis, Milwaukee destroys them. I mean, the beat goes on, right? You would think in the playoffs that something would change. Um, I don't know. You know, when you look at these starting lineups, I would say this. If you're Phoenix, here's your opportunity, right, to get your home floor back. Um, I would expect that Monty Williams' crew would come out in the first quarter and be really aggressive against when you start looking at the, what the Clippers will have for a starting lineup now and how dependent they've been upon Kawhi to score points. Joe, I don't know if we were off air or if you did it in your intro, but you talked about Russell Westbrook, MVP. It's yeah. like giving him the keys to the city tonight. I mean, he's going to have the ball. And I don't know how many. Yep. I immediately looked up his PRA, and it's 36 and a half for tonight. He got over that in game two. He got the 27 in game one, shooting three for 19. Um, he's going to have a blast out on the floor tonight, so I wouldn't oppose anybody playing Westbrook props. But as for the game itself, we've seen the total come down, rightfully so. Um, I had thought that maybe this game would look a little differently scoring-wise a couple hours ago because I thought Kawhi was in. But now I have to change my mind here. The, the Clippers will play with grit. I know that. They're the tougher mm. team of these two. There's no question. But can they make enough shots in this game? I'm not sure. Do I want to lay seven to find out? Not a chance. Um, so, I, you know, as, as a guy who's sitting in this situation with Clippers plus two and a half games, that ticket, I guess I have to sit back, see what happens here, and then counter punch where game four is concerned. But if I was going to play tonight, I think you have to look at Westbrook props. He's going to be involved. Even when he doesn't score, he's going to give you 16 or 17 assists and rebounds combined. Um, so maybe that would be a good way to look. Russell Westbrook props over. Yeah, I know it, uh, it was a good point there in the uh, chat, too, uh, for Rabmatic there about maybe a triple-double Westbrook. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Ronald Kabang, what are you thinking? Are you buying? Uh, are you buying maybe Westbrook to uh, hey take the keys to the kingdom and go be your sub? I mean, it's not like he's not capable of taking over a game here. So, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the usage is going to be there early, so he has the opportunity to do it. But <clears throat> I think if this game gets out of hand early, they could just probably quit. They could probably just, uh, you know, get the bench players in there uh, for the most part in the second half. I, in my opinion, I, I just, I, I just don't know about this, you know, player injured player theory uh, going into the playoffs. Obviously, we like what Rob mentioned. We we saw it with John, we saw it with with uh, Giannis, but here specifically, where I looked at how the Clippers have done without both uh, PG and Kawhi in the lineup at the same time this season, three and nine straight up, three and nine against the spread. And if you look at it specifically at home. One and three straight up and against the spread. The one game that they won was against the Pacers, which they should have won uh, regardless. But the three games that they lost to were comparable teams to to the Suns. Uh, it was it was the Nuggets, Kings, and also the the third game that they lost was actually against the Suns earlier this season. So they've they've seen this team already without uh, Kawhi and PG, and they dominated that game. All four games went over the uh, sorry, all four games went under the closing total as well. If you just look at it from an average perspective, 102 per game for the Clippers in those games, and then they're allowing 112 per game 
I think one of the biggest things that I saw as far as adjustments from the the Sun side from game one to game two was the fact that they 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 pretty much just took Jack Landale out of the rotation because they were getting beat on the boards, especially the offensive boards. And Biombo played a few more minutes to kind of just help that. But obviously hitting 60% from the field is going to help as well. The other thing to mention is the big gap in the di big discrepancy in free throw attempts, uh, 31 attempts from the Clips to 14 to the Suns. I think that's going to balance out. Uh, we see a lot of uh, adjustments from the refs uh, in the playoffs more more so. Uh, so I think that's going to balance out as well. So a lot of things to me um, really just pointing towards the, the Suns and the under in this game. And that's probably the way that I go. Um, uh, I know the seven is, is a lot further from the two and a half that I gave out to clients this morning, but um, I don't know, man. I think this is my, this might just be a, a, a Suns game from beginning to end here. So, um, you know, Ralph, I'll say this, that that final score of game two was a little misleading because that game was way closer than maybe the final score indicated there, especially through three quarters. And, you know, you got Torrey Craig, who's throwing shots up from all over the place, is not missing. Man, they shot lights out there, Phoenix, uh, in that second half of game two mm -hmm. to pull away eventually in the fourth here. I'm just not sold that Phoenix has got it all together with this crew and like it's a well-oiled machine yet. So I, I I would hold off on maybe the parade just yet for the Suns. Uh, what do you think about the opportunity here for, uh, hey, now, just to even stay within this number for the Clippers? I was thinking about poor Rob. Last Sunday, he was popping open that <laughs> Don Perry owned $300 of champagne, having the Clippers plus two and a half and saying, I'm going to get George back in a few games. This is over. I might mm -hmm. as well pop it. Thankfully, his wife told him to hold on. Make sure you don't do that too early. And now he's now he's in this <laughs> mode. So um, I'm going to say this, because both Rob and Ron um, mentioned it. I am a fan of the superstar injury theory, but I don't think it applies here. I was on Milwaukee yesterday with Giannis not there. I wasn't on Memphis, but I did like them without Moran. The difference is this. If your star player is out the night before, you go to bed knowing he won't be there. You wake up the next morning knowing he won't be there. You start to really have a different mentality. If you're going through a walkthrough the day of the game and then find out your star is not playing, I think that's a whole different situation of trying to have that mindset now. So. To me, the star theory does not apply. I, I'm not going to throw much into this game, guys. I lean Phoenix earlier. I lean the under earlier. Without those two guys, I'm not even going to try to make a guess in this game. Um, I, I think Phoenix can win the game. Do I want to lay seven in this situation? No, I don't. If anything, um, I would expect the Clippers to have a good first quarter and then pull away. So if the Clippers ever get ahead in the first quarter, I would look for a live betting situation to jump on Phoenix for the last three quarters of the game. But I'm not even really going to give you an opinion on this. I'll just watch and see what happens. Let me ask you quick, Vino, who's got the coaching edge in this game? Well, if they like him tonight, Monty Williams does. It just depends on whether or not the <laughs> if DeAndre Ayton hates him, then maybe maybe it's Ty Lue. I don't know. You got to see how that locker room chemistry is right now. But I would think Monty Williams, um, in my estimation, is the better coach. It's uh, it's going to be interesting, and of course, that's the last game of the night, uh, guys. That would be Game Three of this three-game slate, and uh, hell. Anything can happen between now and then. Who else knows? Uh, maybe Durant, uh, you know, sneezes and cracks a rib during warm-ups. You never know these days. So, uh, fingers crossed, we'll see how that rolls. <laughs> it combines like you're damn right. 